Hi everyone, I'm Ellie from Code of the Future and today I'm going to be continuing with the NumPy tutorial series in Python by showing you some really nice handy operations that you can use for data analysis. So as usual, I'm going to put my glasses on and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, perfect. So we are in PyCharm and this is the NumPy tutorial 7 and we're just going to cover some handy operations for data analysis. So if you've watched my previous video, I talked you through some nice mathematical operations and today I'm just going to show you some really nice operations that are really useful when it comes to doing data analysis and they're kind of the, the key ones that you need to grasp um, and kind of know about before kind of going and, and doing a bit of data analysis. So we're going to jump straight into the video. I have imported the relevant modules. So we've imported NumPy and that is essentially what we need uh, to do things in NumPy, obviously, because it's the package we're using. If you're unfamiliar with how to import NumPy or install NumPy, then check out the first video. I talk you through how you do that. So I, I will put the link in the description box. So we're just going to start straight away and we're just going to say operations that come in handy for data analysis. Okay, perfect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create two arrays. We're going to have one called one dim for one dimensional and it's just going to have one, two, three, four, five. And again, if you remember from my previous video, I could have created this using the a range command, but I'm just going to do it like this just so you can kind of see what's going on with the array. And we'll just put kind of in hashtags here. This is the array corresponding to this here. Okay. Now we're going to have a two dim array and we're going to say np dot array and we're going to have one, two, three and then we're going to have four, five, six. Now if you're unfamiliar with one dimensional and two dimensional arrays then I really recommend just checking out the first few videos I did on this tutorial series. It just talks you through how you can understand the visualisation of those and essentially just what they are and how to create them. So again this here is just going to create one, two, three and four, five, six with the brackets round. Okay, perfect. So we've created a one dimensional and two dimensional array. And now we're just gonna do some operations on these arrays. So the first thing I'm gonna say is summations. Okay, now you may think if you've done lists before, you may think, well, this is just really easy. We'll just use a sum and then it will add up, you know, the elements within a within a and within an array, and that is true. But because we are using different dimensional arrays, we need to consider, you know, how it will change when you have kind of elements within an, within an element. So that's what I'm just going to show you today, and how you can do summations with higher dimensional arrays. Okay, so let's first say print the sum of one dim. Now we'll run this. Okay, we get fifteen. So what's happened here is quite rightly because it's a one dimensional array. Python has added up every single element within this array, or should I say here? So it's added one, two, three, four, five all together and it produces 15. Okay, now that's something we would expect. So we'll just put here produces 15, okay. Now what I'm gonna say is, okay, well let's do the, similar, the same thing, but we're gonna do it for the two dimensional array. Now just think about what you think is going to happen here because it's kind of different to what's happened here. Now the main misconception with higher dimensional arrays is a lot of people when they start you know, beginning and as a beginner they think well this sum must just add up all these elements here. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. But that's not what happens and I'll just show you what happens. So we're going to run. Okay so what has happened instead is it, Python has taken the first element and is added the second element to it. So we've got 1 plus 4 is 5, 2 plus 5 is 7, and 3 plus 6 is 9. So that's what's happened here. So I'm just going to put that here. Produces 5, 7, 9. Now that is kind of something that may trip you up, and that's why it's worth mentioning in this video, is how summations differ. So we have this here. So that's something worth remembering, because you don't want to think that you're adding you know all these values in here but instead you're getting an array so that is one way of summing but remember we have this one for a high dimensional array it will produce arrays the way that we can overcome that and add every single element despite you know really large dimensions is we're going to use the print one dim dot sum command okay so as usual this prints 15 because we're dealing with a one-dimensional array so I'll just pop here 
produces 15. Now watch what happens when I do the same but for the two dimensional. So two dim sum, we'll run it. Perfect, we get 21. So this is something, as I said, really worth remembering because this one here, just simply doing the sum will add each of the arrays. Whereas this here, dot sum, will add every single number. So every element within each of those arrays within the different dimensions. So that's something, you know, as I, I keep saying, <laughs> as I keep saying, really worth remembering. So that's how you do summations with arrays. Really handy. Now, in data analysis, and you'll probably learn this throughout school, is let's say we have, you know, a class of 30 students and we get all of the heights. You may really want to know who has the highest height, who has the lowest height, and that's where maximum and minimum commands come in really handy with NumPy and Python in general. So we're just going to pop here maximum and minimum. Okay. Now the way that the max and min command works in NumPy is we're just going to say print one dim dot min. Okay. And we're just going to copy this and we'll do the same, but we'll put max instead of min. So max. Okay. And this is doing it for the one dimensional. So we'll run this. Okay, perfect. So it says the minimum, if we scroll back up to what our one dimension was, the minimum is one, which is what we expect. And the maximum is five, which again is what we expect. Perfect. Now, what happens if we say two dim? Do we think it's going to kind of complicate things here like it did? I'm just going to show you what happens. So we're going to run it and it doesn't. So because we have dot min here, it's kind of using numpy as like the function in numpy. So it knows it overcomes all of these arrays, whereas sum is just a built in function for Python in general. So this here, we're just going to say produces one. I'm going to put a capital there. Oh. And this produces six. So again, it takes the minimum number one and the maximum number six. So that's how we tell, you know, in an array, despite, you know, how many dimensions it is, we can find the minimum element within so many different arrays or the maximum so that's a really nice way of doing that so now you may think okay we've got a nice way of adding up each of the elements but let's say we have an array so here we have one two three and four five six what happens if i want to add you know, the first elements in each of these array or let's say i want to add these in the first array and these in the second array how would we do that so i'm just going to copy this two-dimensional array and we're just going to call it 2dim2 and we're going to just have a few extra things in here so we'll have 7, 8, 9 okay okay so now if we print this two dimensional array and we click run notice here it kind of produces it like this so we may want to find out you know the summation in this first array or we may want to know the summation in this column or in rows now the way we do that is we can get numpy to recall whether something's in a row or in a column so we have this two dimensional array i'm just going to put here we can add elements in each row and column okay and the way we do that is let's first say returning elements within each column and the way we do that is we'll say print 2 dim 2 dot sum and inside sum so notice it's exactly the same as what we had here and inside sum we're going to let the axis equal zero okay so this may seem a little bit confusing but i'm just going to click run okay so it, it produced 12 15 18 now this here is going to take each column and it's going to add up the numbers in each column so what's happened here it said one plus four is five plus seven is twelve 2 plus 5 is 7, plus 8 is 15, 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 9 is 18. So what's happened here, the axis 0, is it's taking the columns, which obviously is kind of hard to highlight in here, but it's taking 1, 4, 7, adding it, and we have it, this first entry here, 2, 5, 8, 15, 3, 6, 9, 18. So that's how we add all the elements up in a column and I've just realized I put returning elements for some reason I think that should be summing elements within each column and similarly if we did summing elements within each row 
we would copy the same thing. So two dim sum, but instead of axis equals zero, we would have axis equals one. Okay, so let's run this. Perfect. So what's happened here? This is the axis zero. So that's for columns. Now this is what's just been produced. So what this here will do, instead of going down, it goes across. So we'll add all elements here, which is six, add all elements here, which is 15, and add all the elements here, which is 24. So that is how you do it with rows, and that's how you do it with columns. Okay, perfect. So this video has been incredibly short, I appreciate that, but these are just kind of things that you can get tripped up on a lot. When it comes to arrays, it gets very confusing kind of visualizing everything and understanding you know which arrays in which array because obviously with higher dimensions you have all these arrays enclosed within each other and it can get incredibly confusing as a beginner so that's why i thought i'd release this video here just so you don't trip up on the same stuff that i did when i was first a beginner so here you know remembering that if you use the general python command it will produce a list of the arrays and just kind of like summing and here you know how we do it according to the columns and how you do it according to the axis so we could have an array whereby each array corresponds to something different so this could be you know let's say um shoe size for example obviously that's a bit of a, a, a stretch but you know kids shoe size and this could be kids ages and this could be um their weights i'm you know i'm not really sure but this way here summing things is just a nice way of being able to add them up and then what you can do with summing is find the average you know divide through by how many numbers there are summing is something that you'll use a lot in data analysis it, it just it just is so that's why i thought it's really important to kind of create a little short video on on these basic things here um, that is the video today i do hope you enjoyed it if you did then please like subscribe and comment and don't forget to check out all my social media the links will be in the description box and i'll see you all in the next video